Got them. There we go. Good fish. Schooling up here. Nice one. On the wake bait. What's up y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. I just got done fishing on Table Rock Lake and I came here to experiment with my new Garmin Live Scope. I've had it out for about two trips already. I'm learning it pretty quickly, but there's still a lot more I need to experiment with. Last week I was out here with Randy and I caught some really good fish that were suspended in standing timber and I would use that live scope to fish a drop shot down the trunks of the trees offshore and I caught a lot of really good spotted bass. Now I wanted to come out today and expand on that pattern, try some different baits and see what other baits I can use that live scope to actually catch fish with. And really my preconceived notion coming out is that I can catch a lot of good fish on a wake bait. We are in the middle of September and in the late summertime, one of the best ways to catch offshore bass is on a wake bait. And when I first got out on these offshore standing timber trees, I actually was able to call up several fish with this bait and put a few in the boat. Man, I'm watching a ton of fish on my live scope right here, suspended in trees. And I'm trying to get them on this wake bait to come up on top of it. There's a bunch of fish chasing shad. That's the Mega Bass iJack wake bait. And it's a great way to catch them in the late summertime. Solid spot best to start the day on that bait right there. I'll try to get another one in the boat. Woo! Let's get back down there. There's a bunch of fish schooling. There's a tree straight in front of me here, guys. It is absolutely loaded with fish. I'll show you on the live scope. Those fish are on another tree that I can actually see on my live scope too. And basically these trees are sitting in 40 foot of water, but the tops of the trees are in like 10. And these fish are sitting in the tops of them suspended. And you can catch some fish throwing the top water a lot of times on these cloudy days when they get a little bit more aggressive. And a lot of times the fish that bite this when they do are gonna be the big ones. Oh, got him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Got them to come up out of that tree. These aren't big ones, guys, but they are really fun. Getting them to come out of 15 to 30 feet of water to come eat this wake bait. Let me get this guy off before he gets a hook in me. Oh, there we go. Just a little spotted bass. But literally, these fish are sitting out there in 15, 20 feet. And because the water is so clear here, they're coming up to eat this wake bait. I know that they're not big right now, but you can see this tree in front of me on the live scope. What I'm doing is aiming my live scope right at that tree and then casting my bait over to it. And I'm basically just making repeated casts over the top of this tree, trying to entice some fish to come up on this wake bait. And it takes repeated casts a lot of times to get these fish to actually come up and commit because we have a little bit of chop on the water. Honestly, we have a little bit, almost too much chop on the water for this wake bait, but definitely can still get some to come up. Like that last one, that's two fish here in about five minutes, all on that wake bait. That's so cool. Here's another look at the wake bait I was catching those fish on. It's the Mega Bass iJack wake bait. There are a lot of wake baits in the market. I used to throw a Strike King wake shad a lot, but I actually ran out of those. I broke them all off. And I've been looking for a new wake bait ever since. The standard wake bait that a lot of guys use in the summertime is the old Cotton Cordell Jointed Redfin, or this is the new Berkeley Surge Shad, which is basically the same thing. And it walks across the surface of the water. This is actually a top water bait, despite having this bill. The problem with this jointed redfin is it's kind of a pain to cast. It's very hard to cast. And it's actually hard to keep on the surface of the water on a steady retrieve. If you keep your rod in like a normal position, you have to put your rod super high up in the air and do crazy stuff to get this fish to this bait to walk right. So I experimented with probably seven or eight different brands of wake baits and landed on the Mega Bass iJack. It works really well on long casts. I'll show you here a little bit the retrieve you need to use to get the best action out of this bait, but it has the uh, right size to call those fish out of deep water and a really good action. Again, there are a lot more other ones on the market, but this is the one that I've found that works the best for me. So here's the bait I'm throwing today. It's the Mega Bass iJack wake bait. It has this vertical bill and it walks side to side in the water. And the way I fish it is I throw it on 17 pound 
monofilament line to keep it floating and I'm going to line myself up with my live scope on the tree that I want to fish. Then I'm going to fire that bait out there and once it hits the water, I'm going to keep my rod tip high. That's one of the big keys with wake bait fishing is you got to keep that bait up on the surface. Now I'm just going to kind of work it nice and slow over the surface, trying to get some of those fish to come up and eat it. And this definitely works better when we don't have as much shop on the water, but I wanted to start with this at least to see if I can get a few bites. And then I'm going to switch over to maybe a swim bait or something as well to try to trigger a few more bites here in a second. Oh, got him. That was sweet. That fish was up there in a brush pile. Saw him on the live scope, threw the wake bait over the top of him, and he ate it. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get a large mouth right there, too. Oh, man, that was so sweet. I am digging this wake bait, guys. Let me get this guy unhung real quick. There we go, nice large mouth. He's bleeding just a tiny bit. I want to get him back in the lake, but that's another fish on the wake bait that I saw on my live scope. That's so sick. Golly, there's a brush pile right in front of me here, and you can see fish stacked on it. I'll show that recording again. And they're only in like 10 foot of water. And so, because the water is so clear, we have these cloudy skies, you can bring those fish up to your top water no problem. And again, the ones that usually get this are gonna be pretty good ones, as opposed to just little guys. One just tried to eat it right there again. That's why I like this technique a lot. It's a quality fish technique, good for tournaments. And this is a way that the Forest Wood Cup has been won, like wash toss several times. I've won some tournaments doing this in the past without the live scope, just basically fishing the top water over the top of brush piles and deep sand and timber. And it's so cool to be able to pinpoint where these fish are with that live scope. You can see them actually right here on the live scope again. I can fire up where I see all those dots reel that bait over top of them and watch him crush it. Oh golly, that was sweet. Saw that on the live scope too. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's fish are in the tops of these trees, guys. Oh, he came off. Oh, you, that was a spot. Oh, I got the live scope. You saw the fish. That was crazy. I, I screwed up the landing. I watched that fish come up and eat that thing on the live scope. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's so sick, guys. Lost the fish. I don't really care that much. That was so cool. He bit like right here at the boat, and you watch him just come up and eat it. That was incredible. That was worth the price of admission right there, I feel like. Oh, my gosh. In terms of the equipment I was throwing this eye jack on, I was using a Quantum Tour Special Edition 7 foot medium light action bait casting rod. And I was putting that with a super old Quantum Reel, it's a 6 3 to 1, with 17 pound monofilament line. It's really important to throw either braided line or monofilament when you're fishing these wake baits because that line will float. I prefer mono over braid, but you can get away with both. One thing I noticed about that wake bait is that the fish would only come so far out of those trees to get it. They usually needed to be less than 10 feet from the surface to actually commit and come out of that deeper water to eat it. This meant that the tops of the trees had to be in 10 foot of water or less, and there weren't that many trees like that on these offshore points. That meant that I had to use some different approaches when the fish were in trees that were deeper than that. I actually found several fish that were suspended in trees that topped out in that 15 to 20 foot range, and I could catch a lot of those fish on a drop shot, just like I did last week. It was really consistent actually. When I saw those fish deeper, I would throw that drop shot down there, let it fall down the trunk of the tree, and I would catch a good one on almost every single tree that I pulled up on. Interestingly, I only got one bite per tree pretty much. I wouldn't get multiple bites, despite there being seven, eight, nine, ten fish in each tree. I don't really know what the deal was with that, but that's just how it worked. And really what I determined is that for the first two or three hours of the morning, I would go around these points with my live scope, and if I saw fish in trees that topped out 10 foot or less, I would throw that wake bait over the top of them. And then when I found those fish in trees that were deeper than 10 feet or that topped out deeper than 10 feet, I would throw the drop shot down there. It was a really deadly one-two punch for the first two hours of the morning and I caught a limit of fish, actually lost several fish on the wake bait. One thing about that wake bait is that they weren't committing to it very well because there was some chop on the water. Whenever you have a lot of 
wind and waves, it throws off the action of that wake bait. It makes it harder for those fish to find it and you'll lose fish like you see here in these clips. So if you're trying to fish that wake bait, it's better to throw it on slick calm days when there's no wind. It doesn't really matter if it's cloudy or sunny in the mornings, but definitely fish on those calm days if you want to get a consistent wake bait bite. After about 9 o'clock, the fish stopped committing to that wake bait because the waves from boat traffic and from the wind were too much. So I started experimenting with some different baits. I first started throwing some swim baits as well as this little Ozark special rig I talked about in one of my recent videos. It didn't get any fish to commit to it, but I was able to get a lot of fish to actually hit the spy bait fished over the top of those shallower trees, the ones that were topping out in that you know, 8 to 10 foot range in 30 foot of water. And all I would do with this little dual realis spin bait 80 is cast it out, let it sink down that eight or nine foot mark and just slowly reel it in, super, super slow. And you'll see some of the fish catches here. In terms of the equipment for the spy bait, I was throwing it on a Falcon Buku seven foot medium moderate spinning rod with a Shimano Nexave 250 or 2500 reel, it's like a 50 dollar reel, not expensive, the rod's like 100 bucks. And I was throwing that with straight six pound fluorocarbon, no braid on this because of these treble hooks. These fish will throw these hooks really easily if you have braid. I learned that my lesson about that earlier this year. So I was just throwing straight six pound fluorocarbon and it was a really great three tool approach. Basically, if I was fishing those shallower trees that topped out in 10 foot water or less, I'd catch them on the eye jack when it was calm. When it got windy, I could catch those same exact fish throwing the spy bait over those trees. And then after I found those fish in those deeper trees, I would throw the drop shot down there and I could catch fish as deep as 30 feet of water on the drop shot. So really between these three baits, that was all I needed. Now one thing I found is that the drop shot and this wake bait produced the better fish. For whatever reason, this iJack actually got my best bites of the day. I lost two of them, but it seems like this wake bait calls up those really big fish out of those trees, the most aggressive fish. The fish I was catching on the spy bait were definitely not nearly as good quality as the fish on the wake bait. And honestly, if I was fishing a tournament, I probably wouldn't even worry about throwing the spy bait that often just because all the fish I caught were non-keepers on it, like 12 inchers. But almost every fish that bit this weight bait, with the exception of a couple, were really good quality fish, and I caught several good keepers on the drop shot as well. So really, I am pretty excited about today. I was able to use the live scope and actually see fish coming up, eating the wake bait, eating the spy bait, and eating the drop shot. All three seem like great tools to use in unison with the live scope on these suspended bass. And these are probably the tools I'm gonna be using most often when I go to the lake. I think I can also catch them on the swim bait as well in certain situations. They just weren't eating it that great today. But other than that, I think that I got this live scope, figured out even a little bit more. Next time you see me, I'm going to stop going after the small little spotted bass and suspended trees, and I'm gonna try to go after some bigger largemouth in brush piles and things like that to see if I can catch them on a football jig and deep dive and crankbait. I think that's gonna be a little bit more advanced technique. These spotted bass are pretty easy to catch, honestly once you get the settings dialed in on this live scope. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that. So, you know, I'm gonna keep learning on this, keep experimenting. And again, I'm not gonna be making every video about the live scope. I just am only three days into using it. So I'm pretty pumped about getting more content on it. But again, there's gonna be content without the live scope as well. Don't worry. So other than that, hope you enjoyed some content of me catching fish on the wake bait, drop shot and spy bait. And if you enjoyed, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Also, uh, let me know, or also leave a like and subscribe if you want to get some more content from Fish the Moment. So thanks again for checking out the video, and I'll see you all next one.